From a young age, Liam Jetter had a beaming personality. He is an energetic young man, uh, good sense of humor for uh, when he was a small child. His smile is amazing, but he never believes me, and he doesn't smile nearly enough. He could chat the hind legs off a donkey. <laughs> But Liam's childhood also had its fair share of tough times as his parents began to have marital issues. His mom and me, you know, we were married and it just, it wasn't working out. But, you know, I tried to always make it very clear to him and uh, his sister that it had nothing to do with them. It's just, we just did not get along. There was a good and a bad, but there wasn't a lot of good. So, um, from a young age, knowing that it's best that your parents would probably separate. It was kind of hard. On top of that, Liam's grandmother was battling cancer, so his mother took him and his sisters to Ireland before she passed away. And I was very concerned about how coming back was going to work. Just one day being told, you know, we're leaving in like two days. And I remember the night that happened, you know, being 10 years old, packing a bunch of teddy bears and a bunch of usual stuff and some clothes. Ireland eventually became his home. He never really fully adjusted to living in Ireland. He always thought he was missing something back in the States. And while he did play other sports here, he was like, they loved him on the basketball teams and everything like that. He just, he wanted to go back to high, he wanted to go to high school in the States and play football and basketball there. In his junior year of high school, Liam eventually convinced his mother to let him go back to Arizona in hopes to get an athletic scholarship. He joined the Goldwater football team and caught the eye of his coaches almost immediately. We have a saying here at Goldwater that we don't play favorites, we play playmakers. And he just kept making plays, one after another and after another. And we, we just had to find a way to get him on the field. He became a weapon for us. Um, you know, obviously things get a little different when we put pads on and there's contact. And I mean, I, I can't sit here and say that he's, a, he's solid in his craft yet. He's just not. But he is learning, absolutely learning. And he's going to be a threat. You know, down the road. It, He's the one kid that's coming to me after every practice. Coach, what can I do better? What can I do about you know making 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 our team better and making myself better? For all those years that he was on good teams, a very very good teams, and this is a struggle for him. Maybe this is part of his path so he can learn how to be humble. Not saying he's not, but you had the great times and now you have this adversity. So how do you handle that? If he if he invests the kind of time that a college can invest in him. Uh, I tell you what, he's going to be playing in front of 100,000 people. He's a D1 kid. I'm really proud that he's done something that was so hard so that he can try for his dreams. Because there are no guarantees and he's aware of that. But, you know, I'm really proud of the way he's taken that on. He's, he's really, you know, determined and decided that that's what he wanted to do. And he just, he's gone for it. When you go out in the field, you forget you're not, not a kid with problems, you're not a kid with frustration. And if you are, you play defense. If you're a part of something bigger, and you have people there that say, I got your back, really. I know I want to get to a point, too, where I'm playing in front of a big crowd in the university. So at least my mom had to come watch me. I want to get an education out of it, but I also want to get it for myself so that I can get something to support everybody. I want to at least know that if they, someone needs, or my family needs help, that I can provide it. 